Well hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wildy Garden and in this video I'm going to be showing you my own garden, giving you a quick tour just to show you all the main features that are within the garden that are beneficial for wildlife, some of the plants, the flowers, the structures and everything else that you should need to be putting in your own garden to attract wildlife. This isn't a huge garden but come with me now on a bit of an adventure as we wander through my very own wildlife garden. Okay, here we go then. So, this is the back door of the house into the garden. And as you can see, straight away, we are entering the jungle. <laughs> Which, of course, is one of the main reasons there's so many birds in the garden, because of the overall cover. And if you haven't seen my previous video on why my garden is so good for birds and explaining all the shrubs and different species and showing it in the winter time in its raw form, then do check that out on the channel. So the idea here was to plant climbers up the walls. Even your vertical spaces are just as important in a wildlife garden. So we've got a winter flowering jasmine on here, which provided a nice, it's only been in a couple of years. I mean, look at it, absolutely rampage in a way. Got a little robin box in there, which was used this year. It did have a, a clutch of eggs in there. Unfortunately, the blasted squirrel found it and decided to uh, make a light snack of those eggs in that nest which is a shame because the robin then hasn't come back it's gone elsewhere i think to one of the boxes down the bottom of the garden although i haven't checked uh, so hopefully they'll have a successful brood there anyway um, the archway i put in a couple of years ago which is a nice little pergola which was designed to be able to grow climbers up to provide more shelter and cover and we have a hop on that side and a rambling rose on the other side which we'll come on to in a moment but i just want to show you my little pile of wood down here that I've sort of collected over the years. There's no room in the garden for this at the moment. I'm going to put this in the soil in the borders where it will have a bit more of a benefit for insects and invertebrates where it can stay damp and moist, which is obviously better for a lot of things, particularly stag beetles, which are in the garden, feasting on some rotten logs, no doubt, in their grub form at the moment. Oh, we have a, have a butterfly, a female brimstone. How fantastic, first one of the year. <laughs> oh how wonderful hopefully that's going down to the older bookthorn down the garden which we will come on to in a little while so this border i have on the right hand side has a, a raised border it was just fence here obviously so we wanted to spruce it up wanted to make something of this narrow corridor between the two houses um this one's mine and that's the neighbors so wanted to really just spruce this area up make as much greenery in here as possible so did a raised border planted some buddleias and other herbaceous perennials but the buddleias have taken over a little bit but that's fine that's what we wanted to do this being a north facing garden so north is that way we only get sun down here for a couple of hours a day so it is reasonably shady um got a few little uh, clay pipes old drainage pipes from the ground that i found uh, in one on one job so they're providing a little home for insects uh, invertebrates uh, spiders all sorts of stuff um, and then if we move on to the pergola itself this hop is just fantastic I mean just into May now and look at that <laughs> we've got about seven foot of growth no problem at all so it really is doing very very well absolutely loves it there hop really good for a shady spot i've actually got another one planted on that post and this is the larval food plant of the comma butterfly which is a very familiar butterfly found throughout the uk of course but it will lay its eggs on hop as well as nettles but hop is a favorite and it was the traditional larval food plant although now we've lost a lot of our hops here, particularly in the south of the country they have Kind of diversified onto nettles a bit more but um commas one of the success stories in terms of the butterfly world they are moving further north year by year i believe throughout the uk which is good nice to have a success story I have a few pots of silver birch and hazel and things by the back door a little rock rose in there if you're wondering what this thing is it's herb robert which is absolutely well very prolific in a lot of gardens let's shall we say you'll recognize it if i show you it here lovely little pink flower it's part of the geranium family sprouts up everywhere but it is very good for insects so yeah so the hop as you can see doing very very well up this post sadly it's loved by the snails so yes they do take a bit of a liking to that excuse 
potential plane noise. We're not far from South End Airport, so we may have a passing plane from time to time. Although the the lightened traffic has been fantastic since COVID. Obviously, not a lot of planes fly down to South End. And if you look up there, in amongst this rambling rose, this year we had a blackbird build the first nest. So the theory works. <laughs> cover even a meter and a half from the door and the blackbirds will still nest in there sadly that flipping squirrel came in and took the eggs again so wasn't too chuffed about that but hopefully the blackbirds which you can hear the male singing away he's been singing for days and days and days absolutely loves this garden always a pair of blackbirds in here so dense cover for birds absolute necessity the snowberry Quite often get uh, get a bit of backlash when I suggest people planting snowberry in a garden. It does spread by suckers, but it is a really vital source of nectar for bees and pollen for bees. They absolutely love it in a few weeks' time when it does flower. Well, it's a little bit later on in the summer actually, but um, it's very, very, very good for bees. Also good pro for providing cover. And it's also the larval food plant of the holly blue butterfly, of which I have just seen my first individual in the garden which was very nice to see not seeing one of those yet this year which is obviously late because it's been a very late year we've had such a cold april so i've got a lot of plants in pots on the edge of the patio here and the patio which i built again a couple of years ago and they are doing very well take a little bit of water in the summer but uh, well worth the effort gigantic buddleia which you can see back there uh, i've actually held back with a bit of rope against the fence a little uh, but that is absolutely covered in butterflies in a few weeks time so what have we got in the garden don't know if you can see but just down there we have a robin and a dunnock skulking through the undergrowth and this is the main part of the garden we've got a wood pigeon sat on top of the old sycamore stump which i did take down to let some more light into the bottom area and the patio uh, or particularly the meadow it did there was a rather large tree uh, but we have a nice tree of heaven here which is existing which i wouldn't even dream of doing anything with because even though it casts shade over the pond and the meadow in the middle it's a brilliant landing pad for so many birds the collared doves, the goldfinches, blackbirds, all the tit species, really good. So if I just turn round and show you this part of the garden a little. Now the main seating area here with the patio and chairs. And the ginormous buddleia, which is probably about 20 years old now. And some probably. And it's supported by this pergola. And it is, you can probably hear in the background, the house sparrows. It is home to so many house sparrows through the winter months. Obviously now they're all kind of dispersed and breeding, but it's loved by the house sparrows. Lots of dense cover there, of course, for them, uh, along with the dog rose, which is an absolute bouquet of flowers uh, in not too long at all, towards the end of the month and early June. Dog Rose, really good rambling shrub, quite vigorous, so be warned, <laughs> but very good, loved by bees. Uh, one of my feeders there feeding the bees, feeding the, feeding the birds, sorry. And I just wanted to show you, it's not quite come out here yet, but through the buddleia we have this beautiful honeysuckle, which again, honeysuckle, a very good source of nectar, loved by moths in particular, a lot of hawk moths will use that of an evening. So honeysuckle, really good climber, good for shade, of course. And up here, we'll have the startings of a wood pigeon nest. They did nest there last year. Good old wood pigeons. Often lacking a few brain cells, but <laughs> important in terms of their role in a wildlife garden, of course. So if I step back a little, because I just want to show you, if you can see, speaking of house sparrows, up through there, I have two boxes on the back of the house, one there and one there. That one is actually a house sparrow box. That one's a 38mm hole, so that was designed for starlings. However, this year for the first time we have 
a clutch of young house sparrows in there at the moment which is absolutely fantastic house sparrows of course uh, on the red list they are declining unfortunately and you can hear them chirping away there and I have one over there in the top of the hebe a little male and that was a blue tip that just went past the pigeon's still very happy sat on top of that sycamore stump <laughs> so that's sort of the back of the house where we have the the climbers again and the buddleia so if I pan round now I mean this area is always full of birds absolutely just full of birds robins dunnocks wrens love skulking around in there I've left a load of brash and sort of wood and log piles in there so absolutely loved by the wrens and the dunnocks on a daily basis uh, my little bird feeding table by one of my trays sponsored by wildyourgarden.com <laughs> check it out if you haven't already with the special wild your garden bird seed mixture which was designed by some specialists I work with to design uh, a seed mix that caters for all so you can use this as a ground feeder you can put it in some of your feeders and there's no peanuts in that so it will of course be fine to use all year round for feeding the birds oh and a red admiral just went over me sorry there we go on the choisier well there's a good excuse to go and look at the choisier so the choisier this is a choisier tenata which is a really nice plant evergreen so great for a border you'll often see it in car parks it's not native but as you just saw there a very brief pit stop for a red admiral butterfly which is again the first one i've seen in the garden this year probably come in from the continent recently uh, my, they migrate of course red admirals north from africa and the mediterranean so the choys are very good uh, kind of mingled in with a fatsia this is fatsia japonica with these wonderful berries and um, yeah really nice and evergreen as well so that is the choisier which i would strongly recommend for nectar and a nice shrub for providing a bit of year-round cover and interest i have got you can perhaps just see there this the tip of a rowan which i'm growing which will come up soon above the buddleia and rock it away no doubt so the giant buddleia you can see actually more of the honeysuckle flowering at the top it's obviously flowering up there first because of the sun. Excuse the plane noise. So, panning round to the main part of the garden. You can see up there I have a tip box which is a 28mm hole designed to be used by blue tits and great tits. Nothing in there this year, surprisingly. I was hoping that we get the great tits back. They were in there last year successfully fledged one brood in the box last year i've got uh, more robin and booted boxes down there on the old sycamore stump um, which i i took down actually just to let more light into the garden it was so dark in here before kind of filled this whole gap so it would have made it very difficult uh, to try and establish the wildflower meadow equally we have this fabulous tree of heaven which we've already looked at but i uh, wouldn't dream as i say of doing anything with that got a nice cherry um, in the border there a wild cherry which has fabulous blooms normally it's not actually flowered this year because I cut it back last year again just to promote some fresh growth and make a better shape tree because it was kind of living in the shade of the sycamore for so long um, big sycamore down the bottom again really good as a, as a landing pad for birds you know just because something's not native doesn't mean it doesn't provide habitat so although sycamores were introduced I think in the 18th century into the UK and Europe they are now part of the landscape and provide thousands of aphids for a lot of blue tits obviously and other insects of course for birds through the spring and the summer months here the house sparrows chirping away so the main part of the garden what I am all about I guess wildflower meadows and wildlife ponds <laughs> Uh, and this is obviously the bird bath which we keep topped up all year round oh before we come on to the meadow actually i will just show you if you haven't seen already previously um, my how to make a wildlife barrel pond this is the second pond this is an old wildlife barrel that a, a wildlife barrel well it was an old whiskey barrel that i rescued put a liner in because it was pretty pretty rotten so to keep the water in it's got a liner in 
doesn't look like it would provide much and it's been taken over a little bit by watermint this year so I'll clear some of that out soon but the birds are always in there having a drink and having a splash about around the edges a bit of cotton grass in there as well which will be flowering hopefully soon uh, but the main barrel that I created was this one which is looking absolutely wonderful uh, I've got a little bit of brook lime that I chucked in there a few weeks back left over from a pond so I just thought I'd temporarily house it there a little bit of duckweed that's come in but I'm not too worried about that duckweed it can be a problem if you let it go over the whole pond but that's not the end of the world obviously the lily's doing very well a white water lily water mint again never struggling got my dragonfly perch and my bird perch so the birds are often in here bathing drinking got damselfly larvae in here uh, one or two dragonfly larvae and it's just a great little habitat my actual pots for pollinators as well which are coming back now I haven't cut this napita back and I've sort of <laughs> I've sort of missed the boat a little bit because this napita obviously herbaceous perennials you want to be cutting back once a year usually in March time just to promote some fresh growth I've sort of missed the missed the window now and I'm, I'm tempted just to leave that let it flower and cut it back then and hopefully I'll get a second flush out of it which I usually do and it sounds like we have an arrival of yeah one or two of the collared doves which uh, again could have been a wood pigeon actually uh, so collar dove it was a collar dove sorry questioning myself there yes yeah, so the little pots that I did and here we go look look at this fabulous little bee nectaring on some wild garlic so yeah wild garlic very good for a shady area I'll let this rather noisy plane pass Wild garlic, very good in a shady shady area. Normally associated with woodland, sucks them in a pot and it's working wonders. So, my favourite, favourite plant, of course, in this pot, got some bird's foot trefoil, which is just waiting to attract. Oh, and a male orange tip. Look at that, my favourite butterfly. Which some of you may have already seen the slow motion video I did of, a, uh, of some orange tips that were in the garden a few days ago. I think he's coming back again. Here we go. Hopefully he's going to go on the red campion just to give you a, a nice shot of him. Nope, up and over into the neighbours. Don't sit still for very long these things. So when I found, as I say in the previous video, two mating, male and female, uh, on, I saw them actually land together on the red campion. It was really quite something special and got some nice slow-mo footage of a second male that came into the garden and actually uh, tried to have his way with the female after she'd mated which she wasn't too impressed so if you haven't seen that do check that out some interesting slow-mo footage of those kind of display flights uh, from the males quite fantastic to see very privileged to to have filmed that this year so yes pots pots of pollinators another pot uh, another video on the website on the YouTube if you haven't seen that all sorts of stuff in here we've got some Napita bird's foot trefoil verbena bonariensis coming up uh, this one I'd need to stick some stuff back in the top of that that's the beauty of a wildlife garden obviously there's always things to do as with any garden so the wildlife barrel pond so where was once concrete now stands a meadow and a wildlife pond which is yeah a rather nice little oasis it's my kind of relaxation area if you like where I very rarely get more than 10 minutes to sit and enjoy unfortunately because i have absolutely love this garden but as of of course with the nature of my work i'm often up and down the country creating habitats and spending more time in other people's gardens than my own which is slightly frustrating sometimes but uh, nice at other points to see what's around the country so the idea with this was there's just literally a pathway down the right hand side leading to a little bit of a patio at the bottom and uh, that has now become a bit of a holding ground shall we say for a few plants that uh, get left over from jobs and before they're moved on etc so it's nice nonetheless nice little habitat down there but the main meadow let's have a go at explaining what we've got in the meadow so this was planted with nine centimeter potted plants it's not a huge area and sown with wildflower seed as well and we have these beautiful red campions which of course are looking stunning in the 
sun at the moment and the wildlife pond behind which is not huge it's only three meters by two meters but it's absolutely full of newts there's been all oh, the frog actually on the left hand side uh, you might be able to just see him sat on a little bit of blanket weed on the left marsh marigolds of course looking fabulous real stars of the show in april they are sort of going over now this one this clump's gone over that's sort of on its way out but they are fantastic watermint again i should be pulling some of that out soon because it's just kind of taking over my cobble beach which is where the birds come in to bathe and drink and i'll have another little buddleia there on the edge of the meadow but the main components in the meadow range massively i've planted so many different species of plants in here i've got white campion red campion obviously uh, we've got bladder campion birdsfoot trefoil yarrow oxide daisies lesser knapweed greater knapweed devil's bit scabious got a big clump of hemp agrimony over the back there that's really good for damp con conditions of course and these lovely little i must admit although it's an annual i absolutely love these little forget-me-nots which just seem to pop up everywhere and there's another clump over there and they do do really well to just seed naturally around the garden so the main meadow is a bit of a mix of some of my favorites we've got this greater birdsfoot travel here which is kind of an an overspill from uh, from the um, the pond basically greater birdsfoot trefoil different to the birdsfoot trefoil because it loves damp conditions lives around the pond um, and there's a whole mix in there but this is the kind of this area here which has got a few of these um, thistles in this year which I shall weed out a little bit shortly but this is kind of the sunniest spot in the garden holds the sun for the longest got a few bluebells that I planted throughout the meadow and the woodland border on that side which is uh, not really accessible this time of year because I don't like trampling through the meadow but that's full of wild garlic you've got um, some hedge bed straw in the back there I've also got lots of foxgloves bluebells all the way through and that's a really nice little sort of shady dell gets the early morning sun that does it's east facing so it's really good for early morning sun obviously middle of the day now the garden is in full sun and it's looking rather splendid there's my little bench that I uh, made myself, which is wonderful. However, I'll wander down there. This beautiful valerian, which um, is going to be in flower soon, loved by lots of butterflies. Actually, it's kind of taken over. So, as I sit on my bench and I look into my pond I've got this chap right beside me <laughs> which is fine and these do kind of self seed about a little bit they are spreading there's another clump sort of over there as well um, so along with the teasels you can see the teasels here are going to be flowering this year teasels are another biennial really really good leave the seed heads in the winter absolutely because they are loved by goldfinches so they will grow quite tall maybe to four or five feet I've got a little bit of willow herb that I need to weed out of the meadow area um, willow herb is not too bad but it just does take over a little bit if you're not careful so I've got to take a few sprigs of that out a little mini kind of ornamental cherry tree at the back there which is fine it doesn't really overhang the pond and then the rest of the meadow is going into kind of the shady area at the back which again planted some bluebells these beautiful quintessential english springtime flower in the meadow well there's lots more stuff in here again lots more lesser knapweed and things um, but the meadow is just an absolute delight um, especially as we get towards the end of june into july red campion again really good one for uh, butterflies the orange tips of course which we've already spoken about and just really nice so i'm going to just head back this way so i can show you my right hand border which is the sunniest border in the afternoon so i try and pack this full of plants that are good for wildlife of course 
This gravel area, by the way, is meant to be, it's looking a little bit scruffy, but that's because we've got a rather large population of nipple wort, which, uh, yeah, I shall perhaps remove one or two of those because underneath and around them, there's lots of Verbena bonariensis. You can't really see them at the moment, but they are coming up. Again, a few of these valerian, common valerian, not red valerian, which I do have some of here, which is a very good plant, particularly for hummingbird hawk moths. The red valerian, absolutely essential in any wildlife garden. Very good for shade as well. I've seen it flowering in full shade and still being used by small tortoiseshell butterflies. So yes, back to this border. This is kind of a bit of a, a gravelly border along the bottom here. Got a bit of um, purple toad flax there, which is the um, larval food plant of a toad flax brocade moth, which is a rather fantastic caterpillar. If you haven't seen one, it's a bit like the uh, mullein moth, which actually I found last year on this uh, figwort, water figwort, which is a rather large clump now next to the pond and that grows up pretty tall uh, but the caterpillars, very gregarious caterpillars of the mullein moth absolutely love figwort so that's a nice one to have in the garden and here in this border I have a few kind of I bet not many people have got meadow clary in their herbaceous borders which is a lovely uh, like salvia like flower it's actually a native so it's really really nice bit of marjoram there and this wonderful dames violet which is also the larval food plant of the orange tip and the large white butterfly and this stuff which is absolutely fabulous at the moment this is sweet woodruff which is very very good in shady conditions but equally very much enjoying the sun at the moment in this part of the garden and it's just created this lovely block really really lovely and down the back there I've got my standing deadwood my oak which houses a few stag beetle larvae being in the southeast of the UK and I do get a few stag beetles if I'm lucky in June the adults gracing me with their presence another little robin box on the fence and moving round behind the bench got some more salvias salvia caradonna coming up now will be flowering in June I've got a couple more bits to drop in here, put some crocus in there earlier in the year. If you, if you saw the crocus video I did, that's where the crocus went. They're planted with the kids. And we've got some fantastic Nepeta Six Hills Giant, which is just an absolute monster of a plant. But my God, is it good for bees. So if you're looking for a plant for bees, Six Hills Giant, Nepeta Six Hills Giant, it's absolutely fantastic bit gutted this year had to cut back the um, erysimum again erysimum bowls mauve really really good uh, as a nectar source one of the best herbaceous perennials you can put in your garden short to mid-term perennial they generally live three to four even five years maybe more this one I mean you'll probably see in previous videos was sort of out you know it was out two or three feet in this area uh, but I think that the frost got to them this year. I had another one on the other side of the garden. Bit of a shame. But um, that's gardening for you. Sometimes you win some, you lose some. So, Nepeta Six Hills Giant there. With Valerian engulfing my bench. Teasels, which will become a rather prickly affair in a few weeks' time. Well, they already are actually. The other side of the leaves have this kind of very spiky midrib which, um, yeah, is a little bit sharp, but uh, great. Uh, if you're wondering, by the way, by, by the way, why I've got this fence on the right-hand side here, this is to uh, deter uh, the dogs. Obviously, wildflower meadows and ponds don't go too well with big dogs, unless you've got very well-trained dogs. <laughs> uh, and Siri, my Malamute cross with German Shepherd, uh, likes to uh, chase the squirrels and rightfully so if he sees one in the garden he's never caught one but um, so yes if I didn't have the fencing in then this would be a lot flatter than it is now so if I just pan round a little bit a few more plants in this border bear with me so this red valerian again you can see coming into flower now just about just about coming into flower great again because it flowers later on has a bit of a second flush uh, I've got a lovely Acer in the middle there which is doesn't give too much back for wildlife however you'd be surprised because it does have these beautiful little flowers 
which are visited by pollinators. So nice to see them and of course the holly, nearly forgot the holly. Star of the show in the winter, this thing, let me get a picture of this because this really is a cracking treat. So the holly, absolutely covered in berries this winter it was and the field fairs and the red wings completely stripped it right, with a bar a few at the bottom that they couldn't really get to very well. So yeah, have a look at the video I did about the garden for birds back in the winter time. Some nice footage of some red wings and field fairs on that which is, they usually come into the garden when it's nice and cold. And it was nice and cold this winter time for once which is nice. Um, a bit more honesty by the way, just while I'm going past. This is honesty here again, larval food plant for the orange tip butterfly and a great nectar source for them as well. And um, yeah, there's going to be a good year for them next year. I've got quite a few sort of cropping up in this gravelly area where they dropped from. They were up here last year, but being a biennial, they've now stopped flowering and died back. So we're waiting for the new growth to turn into flowers next year. Uh, we've been through the marshmallow girl, the pond by the way, another favourite of mine, this cuckoo flower, which again, check out the previous video on this vital plant, really is a good one for nectar. So just moving along down the borders, not much more to show you but here we go one of my favourite spring flowers along with the cowslip and this one is garlic mustard which you can actually eat the fresh leaves of this time of year and this is important because it is the favourite larval food plant of the orange tip butterfly my favourite butterfly <laughs> if I hadn't already mentioned 20 times previously uh, again another biennial so uh, if you plant some as a basil rosette now it probably won't flower until next year but really good because it's a nectar source for them as well so nectar source as well as a larval food plant obviously when plants tick the box twice it's very very good they are better than not so here we have as i move down now along with the napita down there we have some sedum autumn joy which is very very good for butterflies and a lot of insects bees as well love it really good as a late flowering nectar source um, in sort of September time and even into October as well so yeah really good one sedum is obviously good for dry areas as well um, and then yeah so the woodland border over there you can see bluebells still looking rather wonderful lots of fresh garlic mustard seedlings ready for flowering next year and here we have my kind of storage area which uh, yeah at the moment I've got a few things in here I need to get planted in the garden. I've got uh, some Veronica there, some bit of Aubrecia, some more Bolsmo, Verissum and Bolsmo to replace the two that died and a few more plants left over from jobs that will be going on to other wildlife garden projects. And on the fence here we have another brilliant climber, Old Man's Beard. This is a native Clematis, Clematis vitalba. And I'm just waiting, I was hoping this year but it doesn't look like they have, I'm just waiting for a robin to take up residence in there for the first time, which I think it won't be too long now. Uh, so looking back, this is my main patch of garlic mustard. This is my orange tip bed. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's got some nice stuff in there. Hellebores as well, good. They haven't flowered this year, but um, they only just went in, so they'll flower next year. Hellebore is very good, particularly a stinking hellebore, the native one for a lot of our early flowering uh, sorry, early emerging bees in particular. Um, and then this is uh, Philadelphus, which is rather nice. And this is the feeding station, which may have you may have seen previously, um, which obviously has got my sunflower hearts and niger seed. Absolutely loved by the goldfinches, this is, this stuff really good one for feeding them all year round sunflower hearts one of the best you can use apart from the wilder garden seed mixture of course <laughs> um, anyway that side by the way hedge bed straw can't remember if I mentioned all that uh, very good for a nectar source and good in shady areas 
Uh, around here we have the old stump of the sycamore, which isn't bad. The aim is to get these as ivy covered stumps. Ivy, of course, a very, very good source of nectar and pollen in the autumn months. And obviously this second food plant, there's the holly blue butterflies that have two broods a year. They lay on holly in the spring and ivy in the autumn. So that's why at times this garden can have between five and seven individuals in flight at once, which is like no other garden I've ever seen because there is so much holly and ivy, absolutely fantastic. I've also got an elder up there, which is due to come into flower soon. And obviously another box on there and a robin box hidden away on the elder summit which you can't really see. Hebe there as well, which is obviously a good nectar source earlier on and through the winter time. Woodland border, I actually sowed, deliberately sowed false brome, these lovely lush grasses through the woodland border, border, great for shade and also because they are the larval food plant of the ringlet and the meadow brown butterflies. So, um, and of course the speckled wood. So speckled wood are actually in the garden uh, I've not seen one this year yet, but they do come in a bit later on, second and third generation, and lay on that. So the second holly tree as well, another really good component, as I say. And I wish you could smell the scent of this hawthorn at the moment, this may blossom, it's also known as. Um, hawthorn, absolutely fantastic in terms of um, a nectar source. A lot of butterflies and bees in particular use it, but just smells delightful at the moment. And obviously in the autumn months, Hawthorne provides a fantastic amount of berries for so many birds. A lot of our thrush species, of course, and in particular field fairs and red wings that come over from Scandinavia. So, that by the way is pretty much the garden tour. This area of the garden down the bottom I am due to renovate in time. It was a bit of a dumping ground prior to moving into the house so there's a fair bit of stuff to clear out there but I'm hoping to create a nice woodland area down the bottom there when I get five minutes of course. Uh, I've also got a, a jackdaw box up in the sycamore tree which hasn't been used yet probably by the squirrel which um, yeah it's probably my own fault but <laughs> So, looking back then, down the garden, and I'll just do one shot from the top. So that is my garden tour for early May. I hope that's given you some information there as to how you guys can go about making your own wildlife garden hopefully there's some elements there that you haven't included but the four main ones as i keep banging on about are native trees and shrubs cover for birds wildflower meadow wildlife pond herbaceous borders for nectar for bees and butterflies if you use those four main principles you won't go far wrong so thank you very much for watching guys, I really hope you've enjoyed the video, I've given you a bit of an insight as to my own garden, how I can spend a few minutes inside this little oasis from time to time, and the benefits that it brings to the area, right on the edge of an urban environment. I haven't got fields around us, but it's absolutely teeming with life all year round. So thanks very much for watching. If you've liked the video, feel free to give the video a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll be sure to bring you many more videos of all the ways in which you can help wildlife in videos to come. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.